Hey, hey there and welcome. So today we're going to paint a watercolour Monsterio Delicio leaf. This is the um, painting that we'll be doing. It employs a technique, a wet and wet technique, that I wish somebody had taught me 20 or 30 years ago. So we'll be getting to practice that one a fair bit during this exercise takes about half an hour don't forget to hit subscribe and like to find more like this this is suitable for beginners and more advanced so no matter what your skill level you can have a go at this one and i'm sure you will get success don't forget to check the links down below and don't forget to subscribe see you in there So let's get started. I have transferred a line drawing onto my watercolour paper. The watercolour paper has been taped down with painter's tape onto a waterproof board. I'm making a nice puddle of fairly strong pigment with my Windsor blue green shade and my green to give me a nice turquoise as my base colour. Now I wanted to go with this beautiful turquoise colour I really like it you might like to um, go with something that's a bit more of a yellow green that is completely up to you but that's what I've used so I'm laying down pigment reserving the veins I don't I have no water no pigment I do not touch where the veins are because I'm leaving the veins of my monsteria leaf white with watercolour we start from the white, we work towards the dark. So I'm laying it down in the darkest, this fairly loaded brush, in the darkest areas of my monsteria, leaving my little white veins without pigment, without water. And I'm just carefully getting the edges around there. I'm putting down the pigment where the area is darkest. Then I take my small round brush, dip it in water, clean, dab it on my paper towel and just touch the edge of the pigment. Not running over where the pigment has been laid down, I don't touch that again. I'm just going on the edge of that, leaving my little white veins. I'm working on an A4 page and I think any smaller than that would make it reasonably difficult to get the the uh it would be a bit fiddly and small if you're trying to do anything smaller so in the shadow areas or the darker areas of this leaf because it's basically a, a green leaf with different tones and that's what we're looking to replicate with this technique and we're using a clean brush dipped in water to create the variation in the tone and we are leaving the white veins untouched because um, that will give us our veins and create a bit of drama and interest in our monsteria leaf. I'm using a um, round brush I could change to one with a point. This one does actually have a pretty good point on it, so I am able to get into some details, but I think I do change it later because it, I decide that it's maybe not the easiest. Um, so again, this, is, this small round brush is uh, dipped into water, dabbed onto the paper towel, and it just softens off the edge. Don't run the brush over what you've already laid in you don't want to flatten out the pigment we're looking to keep the life in the pigment and just touching the edge with water dabbed on paper and to soften off one edge of the pigment that you have laid down we're carefully watching we're using the reference photo um, to work our way around this just observing where the light is where the shadow is and we just lay down our pigment into the shadow areas and then using our wet clean brush we just soften it off with water 
to give ourselves and give us a nice variation in tone. So we just work our way around and we're just at the moment now I'm taking a bit of my Indian yellow and just lightly touching it into the wet paint. This will only work while the paint's still wet into those areas that are in the light. So our lighter areas to give it a little bit of warmth to um, bring it forward. It's simply dab the paintbrush in working in wet paint. So this is a wet in wet technique and will only work while the pigment is still wet. The brush that you're dipping in will need to be of a similar wetness. Otherwise, if it's too wet, you'll get what we call cauliflowers and the water will run and spread the pigment. But while, at, while it's at this stage also, I've mixed up um, my green with indigo to work into the deepest shadows of the leaf because it's quite dark in this first area. Now I'm working on this small section at the moment and it's a cold wet day so it's not drying very quickly. If it was a hot dry day you would need to work on a smaller segment of this um, leaf at a time and choose where you end it on one of the veins if you're going to just work on a section. So I'm going back into that wet area with a fairly well loaded with a reasonable amount of indigo to get the darkest darks in there and we may come back in a bit later on and add a bit more indigo. The, the problem with the indigo is that it is a pigment that um, really runs with the water and every pigment behaves differently and as you get to know your palette you will understand what they do and it's one of the great things to work with a limited palette just to test what each pigment will do. So don't go and have a, a multitude of pigments on your palette. Choose a, a the base colours, um, six or eight, a maximum of nine pigments and really work to get to know how each one behaves when you add it to water, how each one behaves when you add it to other pigments because when you mix um, an Indian yellow with a uh, Windsor blue green you get one reaction but if you were to add a Windsor yellow or a cadmium yellow to that you would get a very very different reaction. Um, cadmium yellow is a semi-opaque pigment, Windsor, uh, the um, Indian yellow is a transparent pigment and it was spread rather nicely. Um, so it's a great exercise, this one is a great exercise for learning how your limited palette works because we only use four colours in this particular painting. We're also learning about that technique of just dabbing the brush into the water and softening off the edges. See if there's too much water it will tend to run, dab it onto your paper towel to dry it off. We don't want to flood the pigment and have cauliflowers happening. So we're just working our way around this leaf meticulously leaving our white veins and that can be a bit fiddly but with patience I have faith that you can do it. So I'm adding um, some more of that darker green with the indigo mixed with it and I just used a tube green that I had that was um, a reasonable green. You can make the green of course with yellow and um, blue. We'll make a green and just stay consistent with that one. Mix up a nice puddle of it. Play around with the pigments that you have in your palette to find a yellow and a blue that gives you a very pleasing green that is pleasing to, to your eye. To keep a clean clear green you need to use either two warm so a warm blue and a warm yellow or a cool blue and a cool yellow or you will tend to get a muddy green. So that's another one for you to, for you to experiment with the pigments that you have in your palette. Just play with those and find, make notes because you can, can if you're anything like me you can forget what you've done. Um, make notes which blue and which green you've used, which blue and yellow I mean, to, to get a green that is pleasing. 
and yet you can push it more towards the blue or you can push it more towards the yellows when you do that by adding more of the specific pigment that you want. And so here um, I'm adding the water first down this side and keeping this um, particular leaf reasonably um, light in that area that I'm working on. So if I'm just basically adding water and letting it suck some pigment in, keeping that vein still as the white vein. But um, to get the, um, the lightness in that side of the leaf, I'm just using a lot of water and very little pigment. Now water gives you the lightest colour of course, white being your lightest colour, but the water will spread the pigment and basically thin it out and dilute it. So if you want something lighter, you add more water. If you want something to be a darker tone, add more pigment and less water. Now I guess one of the um, things that a lot of people struggle with when they're coming from using another medium like acrylics is not knowing how much water to add and getting themselves into a bit of a pickle with how much water and um, we don't lay the paint on like you do with acrylics. We are working quite delicately um, and measured about where we put pigment and where we add water and just taking the time to understand how pigments behave and understand how they behave on the paper that you're using and each pigment behaves with water, how it behaves with water and then next step how it behaves with other pigments. And so I guess that is probably one of the biggest learning sessions you will have from um, your journey into watercolour and once you get a hang of it you will be enthralled and fascinated by this wonderful translucent transparent um, medium that is so versatile in creating so many different beautiful um, effects. We, you can do, use a lot of different techniques. We're using basically a couple of techniques here. So we're using wet in wet where we lay down water and pigment and then we're dropping a little drop of pigment into that. So where we added our drop to a few drops of the yellow, the Indian yellow. Um, that is a wet in wet technique. Uh, we're working wet in dry, wet on dry around the edges. So we got a wet edge and against dry paper. So that's your wet on dry. You can come back in once this whole leaf has dried completely. You could come back in and add another layer. So the um, you're bringing another wet layer over top of the already dry layer in parts you wouldn't necessarily do the entire leaf again because there's not really much point um, unless you ask you're trying to get a very dark deep opaque sort of leaf but i think the beauty of watercolor is its transparency so let's try and maintain that if you wanted to use heavy opaque type paints then maybe acrylics is where you want to go for that or oils or pastel, any of those um, opaque mediums. Though you can get semi-transparents in acrylics. There are some acrylic paints that are somewhat transparent. Now you will notice that I started my leaf on the top left hand side, worked my way down to the bottom left hand side. If you're looking at the page top to bottom left to right, I'm right-handed. So my palette, a paper, all those things are on the right. And um, the reason for doing that is that I, it, the way I work is that I rest the heel of my hand on the table to gain control about what I'm doing with my brush. And if I was to start at the bottom left, by the time I got to the, if I started at the bottom right, sorry, by the time I got to the top left, I would have my hand dipping in the paint continually and I'd have lots of heel prints where I don't really want them and basically create a big mess. So consider where you're starting. So I started top left, worked down to the bottom left. Now I'm starting top right and working down to the bottom right. And that way I can um, work this area, keep the whole 
everything clean and not have those very annoying heel prints, hand heel prints and blodges and spodges where that where we don't want them. It might be fine if that's what you want, but that's not what I wanted with this particular um, this particular painting of the beautiful monsteria. And I think one of the reasons the monsteria is quite fun to paint is it's so um, structured and, and sculptural in its leaf form um, and it gives us a wonderful um, two really great exercise two really great learning opportunities with this one one of them being guarding the white by carefully painting around each of the leaf stems and uh, the uh, the leaf veins and really working either side of the leaf vein and observing that's another lesson so the other lesson is that you're really observing where the darker shadows are in this image or this leaf and where the lights are now that's a it's a print out of a photograph um, just printed on our home printer it is not a very high quality print so a lot of the detail and the subtleness of this leaf will be lost in that but for the purpose of this exercise it's certainly um, it's certainly good enough for us to get the basics of what's going on with this particular leaf and how it forms and droops where the light is hitting it where the shadow is and all these um, things we learn to observe while painting it's good to have your reference image quite close so that you don't have to turn your head or flick around too much to have a look what's going on with that leaf. Your eyes can just dance backwards and forwards between your painting and, and the reference image. Of course, if you had a plant, one of these plants in your home, you might also decide to work from real life, which could be good fun too. I don't actually have one, so I can't. Um, you would need to set up a single source light if you're going to do that so that the light is coming from one side so that it starts it makes sense for you in in a painting but for now you can download the um, the reference image and the line drawing so that you can transfer that to your watercolor paper I will add the links below um, to, to do that and that will make life so much easier because you've got enough to deal with by dealing with the paint and the paper and the water and your brushes and the different pigments um, learning how to draw is not really the exercise here it's learning how to paint so I'm sure there are a lot of other great videos where you're learning how to draw but for this exercise we're learning about painting with watercolor it does require that you begin with a good simple line drawing or a cartoon and to make that easier for you I have um, prepared one that you can download and use to paint your own monsteria leaf and so feel free to jump into the links down below and you can grab those and paint along with me stop and start as you wish and we're getting close to the end of the first layer now once we've done this first layer um, we won't need to do a huge amount now this side of the leaf is pretty light and the, the light is really hitting it on a fair bit of it and so I wanted to maintain that lightness in there and you can decide how far you push that. It's, um, it's looking a little bit um, disjointed at the moment. So a little bit more pigment to bring that in so it's part of the same leaf that's on the other side. But um, of the centre vein. And we just work in where our darkest darks are and bring those in along that bottom edge taking our brush with pigment to get it into the darker areas and then 
carefully defining along the line of the veins. And then with our small round brush off, dab it onto the paper towel and bring that across and soften off that area of leaf. Now this is looking not too bad, but of course we're not finished yet. So we've got some areas that are pretty dark. So I'm going back in with my um, green with indigo in it and dropping in some darker darks along the edge of the veins to, to give them some definition to really help them stand out. Some of the paint, some of the uh, page is drying faster than others, so I would like to um, let it dry a little bit before you decide to do anything further. You, depending on where you are, you might need to let it dry longer than what I've had to. But there are some areas here, and for for the speed of the video, I'm going into the areas that look like they're dry and you can test that by touching, gently touching the back of your finger on the page to feel for the dampness and see if it's still wet or just tip your board up to the light and see if there's any shine of water still on there. And so I'm just going back in now and adding some, some quite strong indigo green in there to really give the depth and um, the deep shadow areas much deeper tone. I do run into a little bit of trouble here because um, the leaf that this is a little curl in the leaf um, but unfortunately it wasn't quite dry enough and I lost some of that definition unfortunately. Not too bad but it's yeah it could have been better if I'd allowed a little bit more time to for it to dry. Now we don't we're only out working in very small areas here. So when we're dropping our indigo green into the next to the veins, we're just working gently in quite small areas. We don't want to go yes, yeah, it's still wet that one, so I can't really go to the other side. But we don't want to overpower our entire painting because we've got a beautiful variation of tone happening. We're just taking the darks a little bit darker. The lights are already there. So we've just to make those lights really pop and dance. We're adding some of our indigo green in there to drop, to drop them back a bit darker. To get a shadow, you could actually use a green and add a little bit of red and make it a gray, like because when you mix complementary colors like that, you end up with a gray. So you could do that, um, but again, one of those ones where you will need to experiment and see what your pigments do on your paper. But for me, I chose at this particular time because I'm very much in favour of doing um, paintings that are basically next, the colours are next to each other on the um, colour wheel. And so we've got yellow, blue and green here. And they are all next to each other on the colour wheel. And that, for me, is very pleasing and calming colour palette. Whereas if I was to go with some strong complementaries, like a green and a red or a purple and yellow or a, a blue and orange, then I would get a very different painting. Nothing to say you can't do it. You just choose the colours that please you. That if you want to, if you decide you want to do this painting for a specific room in your house, you might want to use whatever colours that are um, pleasing for that room. And or if it's a gift for somebody and their favourite colours are a different colour, there's no rules to say that you have to paint this monsterio green or a variation of green. It could be a purple leaf or it could be a green leaf or an orange leaf. It's completely up to you. You're the artist. You do what pleases you when it comes to colour. The uh, purpose of the exercise is to really learn how to manage the pigments, how to control your brushes, how much water to add, um, what, 
your limited pigment colours, what the limited palette, and I would urge you to go no more than four colours. You limit it to four colours and just see how much variation you can get with those four colours because it's immense and we have nowhere near touched what you can achieve with just simply four colours and four um, colours that are close to each other on the colour wheel gives you something pretty special. So you can see that with this uh, indigo green I am only working in very very limited areas. I'm using my small round brush with a very nice little point on it to really get the details in then softening down one edge of that and keeping the other edge quite hard. Now we just use our reference photo and we're looking for where it's real, the darkest areas are so we can really bring those darks in because that will give our painting a real lift. It'll make our lights shine in the darks with the darks and we're just carefully working around and just working in small areas where we've got our um, darkest darks and we can bring those in. Now you can um, keep this going if you like but I think that you will get to a point where how do you know when you're finished? You, you know when you're finished when what you're doing is making the painting worse rather than better. Take a moment, have a cup of tea, take a break, have a look at it, come back, see if, see if there's anything that stands out to you that's not appealing. Then you have a chance to um, drop in some darks, take it a little bit darker. With watercolour, you don't really have a chance to go over it to make it white again. Um, that doesn't happen in watercolour, I'm afraid. So you have to be a little bit more controlled in the beginning because you can go darker but you cannot go lighter. So we really focus on um, reserving the lights. We're getting very close to the final stages here now. We've worked our way around this leaf. It's starting to have some nice form. The bright green you can see on that leaf just above the one that I'm working on is um, quite wet and it's not drying. So it will calm down. Watercolour dries a couple of shades lighter so it will settle so don't panic if yours is looking a bit like a bit garish. It will settle down and if you find your green is too garish, too lollipop green, not a thing that appeals to you when you're finished, let it dry completely and get a very very light wash of a glaze so we might do that in another lesson but a thin glaze of a red which is a complementary to the green and that will grey the whole area down so practice on something small to start with before you tackle this whole leaf because this leaf has already had quite a bit of work put into it so you don't really want to go all out until you know that it's going to work for you with the pigments that you have because as I said they all behave very differently and some of them are transparent something like alizarin is very transparent but it's also very strong it's a very strong pigment so you need to approach that one with caution um, we might do a video later on on how to tackle the problems and do some of those things but for today we're sticking with just working slowly and take, finding all our darkest darks to give our leaf some form so it's working from so our leaf shadows are reasonably strong and going all the way through to the white. And just dab it on Put the paint down with your little pointed brush and then using the round dipped in water dabbed on the paper towel to soften it off so we haven't got hard lines. Now we don't do a lot of squiggle squiggle, we just lay it down. It's a gentle touch this. 
we might define that point, make it a little bit more, a bit stronger. So we can, because it's the page is white and I haven't done a background on this one, so we're working on a white page. So we can make what we want to stand out dark. That'll help automatically for it to stand out. So just a few touches there to tidy up that and really highlight the little pointy, the drip point on that leaf and the vein as it comes down towards the drip point because this is the feature of a tropical rainforest type plant and we want to put that in there because it's quite nice. Gives them their distinctive character. Just review it. I think it's pretty much done. I'm calling this one done. Just one small thing to do apart from waiting for it to dry is that don't forget to sign it. So I hope you enjoyed that and your leaf is pleasing and that you have a lot of fun with that, learnt a lot. So grab your um, pen and time to sign.